going forward now with India, what, people want to see justice. We, we want to see a change. How can we put this into practice now? Because Hindus are a majority in India. Yes, we do have divisions with secularism, liberalism, communism, that sort of thing. But ultimately, if all Hindus united, none of this would happen. You know, unity in numbers, strength in numbers. Why are we so fragmented? What, what, what do you think is the reason? Well, great question. Um, as a, a student of history, there are some um, understandings which I think may be relevant to, to that question. Firstly, unity is only needed when faced with adharma or with violence. Yes. In the absence of those two, the foundational principle of dharma is diversity, where everybody is living, doing their own thing. And so long as they're not sort of um, treading on each other's societal, religious or philosophical toes, then they're welcome to do whatever they wish. So there is no necessity for unity in times of peace. Yeah? And that is traditionally what our Sanatani family has always been. This is why the whole nation, from the, uh, uh, the, the depths of Kanyakumari all the way up to Gangotri and the Himalayas, you know, diversity. You can travel 20, 30 miles and be speaking a different language, be worshipping a different way and still be welcomed as a human being, as a Sanatani. Yeah. It's only when you are faced with violence or adharma that the community needs to work out how diversity unites in order to respond to a violent threat. And we're working that out now. You know, it's becoming apparent to everybody that the assault is actually on the dharmic ideology. What they hate about us is the fact that the Sanatanis worship humanity as an expression of divinity. And that is totally contrary to their dogma. When you have a Sanatani who believes that a human being is a perfect incarnation of Padmatma on a journey to reconnect themselves with Padmatma, then all of a sudden you have no illness for which somebody else has to provide you with a solution. Whereas if you want to continuously enslave people, you have to convince them that something is wrong and that you've got the solution to it. Okay? Yes. And you go every Sunday to go and receive a little bit of that solution. And you see, the thing about a dogma is that it's actually unnatural. Yes. Because as human beings, we are reasoning creatures. We want to understand. Understanding is important to us. Yes. Which is why a dogma has to be driven in weekly. It has to be reasserted. You have to have it done in a very large group environment so peer group pressure can be brought into, into play as well. Whereas Sanatanis, we say, well, we can do our puja at home. Yeah? And we can do it on any day or at any time. And yeah. we've even got different days for different types of practices. And, you know, there, is no, there is no requirement for violence, intellectual or emotional, to be brought to bear to make you do something. Now, because we have this perspective, it's so hard to imprison and enslave intellectually and emotionally people who are sanatani, because a dogma requires the destruction of anything which challenges it in order for it to survive, because it's not natural. Cannibals and vegetarians cannot live together in harmony. You know, one believes it, it, it thrives on consuming the other, and the sooner the vegetarians realize that they're in the company of cannibals, the sooner they unite, the sooner they coordinate their resources and their efforts, the sooner they find voices, the sooner they find leaders, and then they can repel the onslaught of dogmatic cannibals. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.